This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. On this video, we do the following two problems. We're going to use the Pythagorean identities to rewrite some trig expressions. So first of all, here are the three Pythagorean identities. They come from the very first one, which is also called the fundamental identity. So here's our first problem. Use a Pythagorean identity to rewrite the expression cosine squared x minus 1. Now there's different ways people might figure this out, but I notice I've got cosine squared x, so I'm going to use that identity that has the cosine squared in it. Remember, there's one that says cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. That's the most fundamental identity. So some people might notice that to get the, this expression, cosine squared x minus 1, they can take this equation and subtract 1 from both sides. So I'd have cosine squared x minus 1, but I also have this plus sine squared x, and then we'll just subtract that from both sides. So some people will automatically notice that cosine squared x minus 1 is exactly negative sine squared x. And here's another way to do it. So again, thinking of the first identity, you're going to say, well, how could I replace cosine squared x with something? Well, if I solve for cosine squared x, that's 1 minus sine squared x. This is one you should pretty much have down pat. Cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1 is the same as cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x. So thinking about it this way, you could replace the cosine squared x right here with 1 minus sine squared x. And then you have minus 1. So in other words, move that over here. We're saying that's equal to 1 minus sine squared x minus 1. And then 1 minus 1, that's going to give you a 0, and so you have your final answer of just negative sine squared x. So somebody else might come up with the answer that way. All right, so here was the first way right here. You notice if you take the original basic identity here and write the cosine squared x minus 1 on both sides, you get the answer right away to be equal sine squared x. So some people might right away get the answer sine squared x by, think about, by thinking about it that way. The other way is to replace cosine squared x with 1 minus sine squared x, and then simplify to get the answer of negative sine squared x. Here's our next problem. Cosecant of x plus 1 times cosecant of x minus 1. All right, so now one way of doing a lot of these problems is putting everything in terms of sines and cosines. So we'll do that later, but let's just use the Pythagor Pythagorean identity. So what's the one that has the cosecant of x in a, an identity, it's got the squared, right? It has cotangent squared x plus 1 is cosecant squared x. I don't have cotangent squared x. I don't have cosecant squared x. But notice this is the product of two binomials, so I'm just going to do the FOIL method. And there's a difference of two squares, so I have cosecant squared x minus 1. So you might think that's the end of it, but you think, I wonder if I could simplify that any further. Well, notice from this equation over here, it says the cosecant squared x is the same as the cotangent of x plus 1. So I could replace this cosecant squared x with cotangent squared x plus 1, and then I'm subtracting this one up there to get cotangent squared x. So that's one way to simplify that. Now somebody else might see it differently. If they start off with this original 
equation here and they say I'm trying to simplify cosine squared of x minus 1, they might notice that if I just subtract 1 from both sides, I get the cotangent squared x is equal to cosecant squared x minus 1. And so right away they would have gotten the answer is simply the cotangent squared x. So it kind of depends what you see, you know, what makes sense to you when you first do it. There are just different ways of getting the same answer. All right, so if somebody thought about it this way, they would have immediately gone to that step without first replacing cosecant squared x with cotangent squared x plus 1. Now somebody else may have changed everything in terms of sines and cosines, and that could have done, been done before you did the FOIL method or after you did the FOIL method. So let's say you had the original again, so we have cosecant x plus 1 times cosecant x minus 1. And let's say you did start off by doing the difference of t squares. What happened to my equal sign? And then we can change that cosecant to 1 over sine, right? Because that's the reciprocal identity. So that's going to be 1 over sine squared x, right? And I have minus 1. But I'm going to get a common denominator here, so I can subtract. So I have a sine squared x in the denominator here, so I need to multiply this by sine squared x over sine squared x. And that will then give me in the numerator 1 minus sine squared x over sine squared x. And at this point, you have to recognize 1 minus sine squared x is the same thing as cosine squared x. That's from the fundamental identity. So we have cosine squared x over sine squared x, but that's the same thing as the cosine over the sine, right? squared, I'm just showing every single step, I'm sure some of you could skip a few of these, which is the same thing as cotangent, right? Cotangent of x squared, which we write as cotangent squared x. So notice I get the same answer as when I did it the first two ways I've shown you. So basically what you want is to get some facility in kind of rewriting using the um, Pythagorean identities in its different forms. This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.